She's been very clingy today. Um, whoa, whoa. Ah. We are now going to talk about flood prevention strategies. Now we're going to be looking at flood prevention strategies. So broadly speaking, that will be divided into hard engineering and soft engineering strategies. Hard engineering strategies involves building artificial structures which try to control the rivers and help prevent flooding in this way, such as the building of seawalls. The hard engineering strategies tend to be more expensive and they need an awful lot of maintenance. Soft engineering strategies do not involve the building of artificial structures. They take a more sustainable and natural approach to preventing river flooding. That could involve encouraging wetland development. I'm now going to describe the various hard and soft engineering strategies in much more detail. So starting with hard engineering strategies, we'll be looking at the relative advantages and disadvantages. So starting with dams and reservoirs. Now the good thing about these is that water can be controlled and also it provides a good source of renewable energy in the form of HEP, hydroelectric power. But the problem with dams and reservoirs is they are very expensive and I have touched on this previously, where rivers cross international boundaries, you're gonna have a lot of conflict in terms of who's controlling that water supply, and it could lead to a great deal of water insecurity for countries which are downstream of those dams. The building of such dams and reservoirs also leads to a huge amount of damage to ecosystems and loss of biodiversity as deforestation occurs. Flood embankments and seawalls hold back the flood water and prevent damage to farmland and settlements. They are very expensive and again they will adversely affect ecosystems and lead to deforestation. There is the potential to increase the height of the seawalls as sea levels change and clearly these will save lives, help prevent damage to settlements and they are a very effective way of preventing flooding. Although at the beginning there's just a one-off cost, they will need maintenance because in a hundred years, for example, these seawalls will probably have been breached and therefore they'll need to be rebuilt. The next hard engineering strategy I want to talk about is river straightening and river dredging. So straightening the river increases the speed of the river, meaning that it can effectively hold more water, which is good when you see increased river discharge, which may lead to flash floods. And dredging means removing lots of sediment any waste that's entered the river, again, meaning that the river can hold more water. So through straightening and dredging, we'll see the river can hold more water, therefore helping to prevent floods, meaning that less damage occurs to people's homes, and it means that people's lives are less at risk. In terms of disadvantages, that river dredging does need to be done fairly frequently, so there's a cost incurred with that. And river straightening, because that increases the speed of the river, it may actually increase flood risk further downstream. Turning our attention to flood relief channels, this is when river water flows into smaller channels where it can re-enter the river further downstream. By removing this excess water, it reduces the chance of flooding and all the disadvantages that come with that. However, this approach is quite expensive to build and if water levels continue to rise, then these river channels may also flood. Moving on to soft engineering approaches, this includes flood warnings and preparation, flood control schemes, and floodplain zoning. So flood warnings and preparation. In this case, the environmental agency monitors rainfall, looks at the chance of floods and issues warnings either across the TV or radio, telling people when floods are most likely to occur so people can be warned and leave if needs be or put any necessary precautions in place. This could simply mean using sandbags to protect their properties, meaning that their possessions are saved and fewer insurance claims are made. There are quite a few disadvantages with this approach, however. Firstly, those flood warnings may not occur quickly enough. People may not hear them. Secondly, it doesn't actually stop any of the flooding. So although people's lives will definitely be saved, if the flooding is such that people's homes still get damaged, then obviously this isn't a sufficient method. Floodplain zoning involves using floodplains for very particular land uses and therefore restricting the building of houses and factories in these areas which are more susceptible to flooding. So more expensive buildings are built further away from the river in areas less likely to flood and this obviously reduces damages to these types of buildings. But remember it's not always possible to change existing land uses and people will still be inclined to build there and buy their homes there so, so it's very important that you check whether your house that you're planning on buying is built on a place that's likely to flood because in that case it should be avoided at all costs. Flood control schemes encourages the development of wetlands and marshes because these act as great temporary stores of water. They're a very natural and sustainable approach and encourage wide biodiversity, increased speciation. It's nice and cheap, but as with all things, it's not always possible. 
I think it's because it's cold. Ah, please don't. You're gonna tear a hole in my leggings. She's growling because she hates it when she's moved, but I can't just sit in front of the camera all day. You can find you a warm place to sit, you know. Study figure 1A in the resource booklet. Explain one advantage and one disadvantage of the flood prevention measures shown. So we have details about flood prevention measure in York in the UK. So have a look at what we have here. Definitely use the key look. We have flood walls and gates. And we have a flood embankment. So what's good about the flood walls? Well, obviously they're going to reduce the level of damage caused by the floods, which could save people's lives, particularly in the people living around Earlsborough Terrace. Real disadvantages with flood walls though. Remember these are hard engineering strategies. They're very expensive because of the huge amount of work that goes into removing those trees, which they've already mentioned here, to build new flood defences. 14 trees must be removed. So from an environmental point of view, that's terrible because that destroys habitats for wildlife. And it's something that will need maintaining. So for an example, in 100 years, it's unlikely those flood walls will still be here. So we're going to start with the advantage, which is that flood walls reduce the level of damage caused by floods potentially saving lives disadvantage trees need removing to allow flood walls to be built. This destroys ecosystems and animal habitats.